not mad at that at all. Hey everybody, welcome to my studio. I wanted to do something special for us guitar players today. Uh, we normally love writing and we, you know, love coming up with riffs or learning our favorite riffs, but how do you take those ideas and either start learning how to putting them into the computer, start learning how to put audio into the computer. And, you know, I, I remember when I first started, I hated what I was doing and I knew what I wanted it to sound like in my head. I just could not get it onto the recording software. Also, I want to let everyone know I'm putting together a course that is going to be introduction level. How do we take guitar production? How, I'm just a guitar player. How do I start producing? I'm building a course that is going to take you through that whole thing. I'm going to get it in your hands as fast as I can. But having this knowledge, having this skill, you are going to be a far better bandmate, guitar player, just musician. If you know what goes on on this stage, you don't have to do this full time like I do. But if you understand this, when you go to a band practice and you start writing with friends, you are going to think totally different and you're going to end up being the smartest guy in the room. So today I'm going to maybe give you a couple of little tips, little pointers, um, maybe a different workflow than maybe than you might be traditionally used to. But I'm going to build something from scratch from the guitar chair. All the Helix presets that you heard are going to be available. You can go grab them. It's going to be great. Throw them in your rig if you like heavy stuff and somewhat produce a moment. I'm not necessarily going to do the whole song. We don't have time for that. But if I can just show you a little bit of how we start an idea or how to start something or how to take like, oh, I found a cool chord. What comes next? Or how do you start building an idea? This changes for me all the time. I've got multiple different methods and routes and each one of them yields a different result. If I start with the drums, it's going to sound a certain way. If I start with soft guitar, it's going to sound a certain way. This is just really meant to spark some ideas and get you recording and working, getting your music into the world. Ultimately, that's the end goal. A little housekeeping, like, subscribe, do the whole thing. I want to help build up guitar players and musicians and producers and bass players to just go up a level and get deeper in your craft, learn how to really speak a language beyond your instrument. So that way you're able to play in bands, you're able to produce records and mix records. It has to start somewhere and I want to help you start somewhere. All right, let's look at the gear we got going today. I bought this thing as just a guitar that I could throw around on stage. It is a Squire Deluxe. I put some uh, DiMarzios in it. This thing just happens to rip and I love it. It's tuned a full step down, so it's in drop C. So it's pretty low. Everything you're hearing today too is also gonna be in drop A because I'm using the Helix to go down even further. Nothing says heavy metal or rock faster than like low tuned guitars. Bass I'm playing is a little bit nicer. It's a Sire PJ. Most people have a P bass or some type of, you know, P bass like that. I will go passive today just to really represent what these presets can do and what it sounds like in a mix and that you don't need all these extra knobs. You don't, you don't. Okay, so those are the guitars. Everything else we're gonna do in the box. We might do a little synth work here. We'll see what comes up. Okay, so first thing, I was building out some presets and things. And I found this chord, always on the hunt for a new chord I haven't heard before. Something that isn't just super overused. You know, big six chord, it's big extension chord, that's what they're called. So, you know, it's got a nine in it, it's got the six in it. All you gotta know is that it isn't necessarily super normal. And I wanted to start there. These presets are pretty <laughs> chunky. Let's see if I can calm her down a little bit. I have a gate on it pretty hard too. So that's, you know, volume way down, but when you play it, just ripping. She's got, she's got something to say. So that's the chord. And I kind of wanted to look at early 2000s, Deftones, kind of sludge shoegaze rock thing with these big extension chords. Wow, there is nothing in here, all blank. Super intimidating. There's option anxiety. I can do anything. And so I just get overwhelmed and I stop. Here's your first step into coming up with something to bounce an idea off of. I always love to start with the drums. That's like one of my favorite things. I wish I was a drummer. That's why. Okay. So I'm using XLN audio, addictive drums today. Ooh, 
Yeah. Very, uh, you know, rock forward drums. DW kit. I love this program. You're able to like go in and select all these different types of drums, build your own custom kit. And then they've got great presets and all this stuff. Go check out Excellent Audio. Seriously, like fantastic drums. All right. So I've built a kit that I really love and I kind of, you know, got it dialed in the way that I like. And I saved it as a, as a preset. You can do the same thing. Just find some drums you like. Save it. So let's see here. Halftime at 125. Like, like that. I always kind of start just trying to imagine the song in my head first. It may not come out the same. The end result might not be there at the end of the session. But you got to start somewhere. You got to be bold enough and brave enough to just like, like, what's it going to sound like? I don't know. God. God, you know, all right, cool. That feels, you know, feels pretty good. Feels like, you know, old school, like deaf tones change. Let's look at maybe like, uh, uh, all right, cool. So let's look at it's four bars, you know, it's enough to make enough to make some music. Hate this intro thing. So let's just see here. Like, um, Like a little, you know, and then we're in. I normally take four bar phrases. That's the easiest thing for me to do. You take a four bar phrase. We don't need to get too involved. You don't need to get too deep. You know, we're just trying to get some ideas out of our brain and into, into the computer. Okay. So now let's maybe, we got to crash and figure out maybe you just like, you know, hitting a ride kind of thing. So let's try this. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah, that's gonna feel great. Okay, so then copy that information right over. And so now we got this. Two, three, and Not the greatest fill, but you know what? It's good enough for government work, you know? Ooh, that's gonna feel good. Okay, cool. Just clean it up a little bit. Let's just start throwing paint at the wall. Let's see what kind of sticks. All right, and I'm thinking of just big O diamonds and maybe like diamonds are whole notes uh, here in Nashville. It's just, it's a term that we use when we're trying to reference, you know, for the whole measure. All right. One, two, three. I'm not mad at the, that progression. Kind of took you through eight bars to go on journey. Cool. All right. Step one in guitar layering. So that's one amp. And I'm, I'm let's just keep the same guitar. So many people just have one guitar. I only had one guitar for years. And I did everything with it. So it is possible. All right. Change presets. Looks just similar, but it's a different amp. So now we got a little thinner. You know? And that's okay, because we're going to have a bass player eventually. See what this sounds like. One, two. I missed one little section. Right there, just straight down. Cool, so we'll just take, we can take it from right there. I know what's up. One, two, three, uh. Heck yeah, that's gonna feel great. Amp number three. These are pretty, pretty extended chords. And when you're dealing with that, Everyone's like, oh, the pickups need to be better because the note articulation. No, just layer it correctly and you'll find that, no, you don't necessarily need better pickups and you got all this better guitar and everything. No, learn how recording it a certain way actually will give you the result you want. Okay, so what I'm gonna do on these next tapes takes is just the low notes. And this amp, let's see what this amp is. Oh, this is the Das German, the, the, the Diesel. I don't know. It's some great German amp, just mean and 
angry. One, two, three. Big old beef. Next one, and like I said, I'm just playing the roots. I'm not playing the whole chord. All right, same thing. One, two, layer up. I mean, that sounds just gigantic. Cool, and these presets are a little bit hotter. They're different amps, so they're not all going to be the exact same. You can go in and fix that in the Helix, but you know what? Learn to do it in the DAW. Digital Audio Workstation. All right. One, two. Okay, so now let's do this cleanish amp. And maybe we take just the top end of the chord. So the top chord is, so. And you know what? Let's just put a little, little love on it. Watch the wow and flutter. You don't want to pull too much out of tune. Love it. Uh, let me look at something on the cab real quick. It's a little, little crispy, so. Maybe change the position. Let's go to the... Don't want to get too muddy because this is supposed to be our articulation. 160 is a little dark. Ooh, there she is. That's nice. And when you're in this stage, you just go. You just record. You just press it, go. Don't think about it too much. You can always retract later. But just keep moving, you know? All right, let's 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 throw that on the left. Let's go get one more, one more layer of clean. Ooh, and let's get a little bit of that shoegazy Deftones vibe, right? Turn up the mix on the reverb. Yeah, let's 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 push this a little bit more because this has got this has got the vibe on it. One, two, let's see. What? That's got some voicing in it. I love that. Let's hear it. All right, little trick on this lead. Let's get this lead to pop through a little bit more because it is just getting obliterated. My go-to's. Man, Sound Toys, absolutely love this company. They're great. You don't have to make a bus for it right at this point. I'm just throwing it right on there. Saturate your delays and let's get, I mean, kind of nasty. Let's just hear this real quick. You want that real mid-ranging like honk. So it's got to cut through a ton of stuff. All right, so we'll do the Echo Boy and then I don't want to spend too much time on getting this dialed in, but I do want it to pop out once we hit to bass, because bass is gonna just light this thing up. Let's go grab, in the mix, let's see what it sounds like. One, two, one, two. Yeah. All right, let's go to bass, so. And like I said, I'm running it passive, Ooh, ooh, yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, boys and girls, it also is really great to make sure you're on the right channel before you press record. So, all right. Let's try it again. One, two, right channel. Ladies and gentlemen, that, that is just, whew. Oh, 
Okay, cool. And base is done. Moving on, let's look at synth real quick. Because when you're dealing with, you know, hardcore music and just music in general right now, there's so much range as far as genre bending and, you know, this Micro Freak is awesome. So, tons of range of sounds. And we found it. Let's go with this. Let's do this. So let's see. Like, add a little chorus from the Helix. Yeah. And let's see. A little more verb. A bit much. So one thing. We have a kind of a weird chord shift here. So, one thing I want to do for the listener is show them a little bit, maybe like we do an intro or something like that. Eight bars to play around with something, you know? Let's just see what happens with this synth thing. Uh, oh, let's see. Aside from me messing up a little bit, let's, I'm still working the part out. Literally writing this in front of you guys. This is why it's not important that you know music theory. It's very important, it's very important. Close enough. We're just gonna we're just gonna move on. We're gonna move on. We're gonna move on. Let's add one more layer in the box. Uh, this is a little known like plugin series. And I don't know why more people do not use this. This is insane to me. So Labs Spitfire Audio. Throw a couple of you know plugins on it. One of my favorites is this guy. Okay, so let's look at maybe something like that. Let's see what happens. back to the top or we can go anywhere after that verse all of a sudden now these two little synth layers mad at any of that last thing there's some tricks that we can do with guitar this lands in kind of the programming world a little bit if that's our first chord we've all kind of heard this sound before so watch this i'm gonna show you a trick all right so if we took that the great thing in logic is there's a little reverse button right there and we just take that right up to the downbeat. Chop the tail off, don't need that. Fade it up. Let's do one on the right as well. Cool. All right, same move. In any program sound like this, I love to put above the drums like that. That's just where I put stuff. All right. To, I mean, this is just the fun ear candy stuff. So I've built over the years just some of my favorite um, samples. So these are mine. And snares, pads, loops, you know, all sorts of stuff. 
But some of these right here, we're just going to go grab. This might be loud. Sorry, everyone. Three. It's coming in real hot. You definitely want to pull stuff down that, that's pretty hot like that. This is going to be in the wrong key, more than likely. So we're going to have to change that. Let's go down two more steps. Yeah, this little. And let's go get one more thing. Kind of in the same move. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Gee, let's throw let's throw some love on it real quick. Okay. Simple delay. And let's do it at a quarter note. Because I think I know what this is going to be. This is why it's important to do the reps. Because I know what this stuff does. I know what these sounds are. And I know how they can benefit a track. And let's go up two steps. Yes. 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 So that it's a sample I made. I was working on a record and I just wanted something like, wow, 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 wow. I, just, I wanted that. And there's only one way to get it. So we could do rhythm delays. And so now let's solo it. Kind of sounds terrible on its own. Look at that. Wow. What do you know? But in the mix, sometimes it helps to get things sounding bad. Uh, it needs to be pitched a little bit. There we go, down a half step. I'm not terribly upset with that as a start. Let's think of that as maybe like, if that was your intro, most of the time you're going to want your intro to either be some type of, uh, you, you want to hear it called back to at some point in the song. So it might end up being the chorus. So we might have just written a chorus, you know, or I look at this sometimes too, that that might be, we just take that and make that the verse and maybe thin it out a little bit. Let's see what happens if we did that. Okay. What if we took this same thing and just flew that over and instead of open, what's it called? Uh, crashes. We go to a slightly maybe tighter hat and maybe we remove the lead line and maybe we just do the low notes. We'll see. Hold on. So let's look at this. Look at that. Boom. We just wrote a verse. So probably don't have the woo going into that or the vocal crash because we want to have a different thing. We don't want it to be this verse, you know, you might, but I, these are just my kind of instincts. So what I was doing right there, you probably heard me just like gibberishing and all that. I'm telling you guys, when you're starting to write, don't just think one dimensionally or two dimensionally, like, I'm the band guy. I'm the, I'm the guitar player. No, 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 no. So much relationship happens between the vocal, the melody and the chords and the rhythm. I mean, all, when all four of those things come together, it's just magic. It's perfect. And we all know great songs that just make you want to sing along. You don't know why you love to sing this one moment in the song. Well, because the lyric, the melody, the rhythm and everything came together perfectly. So what I do is when I'm sitting here just working on something, I just kind of gibberish and find different rhythms. I know what the music's doing because I just wrote it. it. just came up out of, you know, out of my brain. So let's maybe think of a different lead line. Maybe find something else that can stand on its own. Maybe the melody that would be too busy for the guitar works great for the voice. So let's just, you know.
I'm literally just, you know, just phonetic crap. And it's just, you kind of want to represent syllables and consonants and moments to soar and go up and down. And all that stuff just starts, I know it sounds weird, but I rarely sit down with a pen and paper and like, I'm going to write a song about. It's fun to have goals like, oh man, I want to write a, it'd be fun to write a song about fill in the blank. Uh, I need to write a song about heartache, pain, depression. That's what I'm going through. It's all I can think about. Write it. Do it. For sure. Sometimes, though, in early writers, you don't know how to write. You don't know what you're doing. You are if, you're afraid to open your mouth and sound stupid because you've never written a song before. All you've done is kind of put a few chords together. We're changing that. So the way to do it is when you start kind of hearing some music like you know oh man this feels there's a vibe here i'm cool with that and then just start singing maybe what you would play on guitar and you'll start realizing oh there's space for the human voice there's actual real estate that this is supposed to live in it's really cool so So literally, I just start, and the more you do it, the more comfortable you are just actually putting some words to it. So I said just something like, let it go, or like, um, tell some to let it go, where'd it go? You know, like I got to this thing of like, where'd it go? Where'd it go, where'd it go, where'd it go? And so then it's like, oh man, that feels really fun to sing there. Then just reverse engineer the rest of the lyrics. What's it about? I don't know where to go in life. Where'd it go, where'd it go? Oh, I don't know where time went. I don't know where this moment, I don't know where this relationship went. Do you see how it's almost like word association? I did the same thing musically. Like, oh man, I love that chord. Oh, oh you know what? Oh, let's, oh, that sounds cool next to it. I'm doing the same thing lyrically. And that right there is how you go from just being a guitar player, how you just go from being a bass player to producer to writer. And in Nashville, in my line of work, the track writer producer guy is a lot of times the same dude. And I feel like a lot of you want to get to that point. You're great on guitar. You wish you could have a, a symphony of guitars because that's all you know how to play. Here are some simple steps to getting it in there and getting great sounding stuff to where you can demo and show your friends. And don't be discouraged. Your taste is going to outweigh your craft for a, for a minute. Because when you, you might be a great guitar player, but the minute you start trying to record, you're like, why do I sound like trash? This is straight up trash milk. I don't want to drink this. Okay. They start leveling out. The more you do this, the more reps you do. Like I said, I knew what some of these sounds were going to do and going to sound like. I had these samples from previous sessions. So I knew how to build things and I knew what they were going to kind of sound like. I had a drum kit that I really liked and I just saved as a, as a preset, a little template. So do the same thing. And then all of a sudden you'll realize, oh man, my craft is catching up to my taste and my, what I want to sound like. Don't be discouraged. Keep going. Be brave. Open your mouth. Find some fun stuff to sing. People don't care what they're singing as long as it's fun to sing. So remember that. Anyway, take all this, put it in your production. I'm excited to hear how you guys use all this. Hopefully this helped a little bit. If anything, it maybe sparked a different method for you. I'm here. I'm ready to help you go to a deeper level in your production, your writing, your guitar playing, your bass playing, your musicianship as a whole. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. Thanks for spending some time. This is a long one. Appreciate all y'all. Thanks.